Hello everybody, I am Vishali Sharma, your psychology educator and today in this video we are going to discuss how to write a research proposal. So I know you, most of you were waiting for this video and I am a bit late but I needed some time to adjust into the new environment of IIT Roorkee. As you guys know that I am a scholar at IIT Roorkee now and this is something about me. You can pause the video and read. Without any further delay, let's begin. So first of all, we're going to talk about the basic components of the research proposal. This video is for all the subjects. There's nothing specific to psychology here in this video. I'm going to talk about all the basic components one must use to write an abstract, um, the research proposal. So first of all, we begin with the title, which should be concise, descriptive, informative, as well as catchy. So how can something be concise and descriptive and informative, you must be wondering. So in your title there should be like your iv and dv and population which should be clearly mentioned then comes the abstract which is basically the 200 to 300 word summary of your whole project where you're going to summarize the rationale objective method population time frame and expected outcome then we come to the introduction which should be having your topic area your research question and what significance your research will add to the knowledge base of that particular subject then we come to the literature review or review of literature so this is something very important you should know that it is of course you are doing a research on something like let's say anxiety so you're not going to add all the anxiety researches available out there in your thesis under your literature review you should know that there is some population that you're targeting there is some variable that you're targeting and there is something that you're adding like you're filling the research gap so you are adding to something so you should be very concise and very on to it that yes i am assessing the difference of anxiety between the uh, ugc net and meet aspirants so that is how you're going to make the difference and you are going to uh, write down the researches available which are most relevant and most important which justify your hypothesis as well then we come to the aim it is basically what it will be the overall intention of your whole project and then comes the objective so if we say aim is a what then objective is how how am i going to do that research so we are going to be very logical feasible and coherent when I, we are mentioning that this is how i'm going to attain or obtain the what of my aim and the objective so there's this guideline where we write objectives to determine to compare to verify so if you have been a psychology student you must know that we've been preparing files since grade 11th and 12th and we write the objective to describe to compare to verify so this is how you write the objective then comes the question or the hypothesis so again if you have been a subject like if you have been a student of psychology or sociology or history or any subject for that matter you know that the definition for hypothesis is the tentative solution to a problem or the tentative relationship between the two variables or more variables so it should be very clear that what you are stating so what relationship is uh, presented by you under that hypothesis then we comes to uh, we come to the method section in which we are going to approach the question the question that we have mentioned and the research design then the subject the participant how many males how many females how, what is the inclusion criteria what is the exclusion criteria how are we targeting them what is the sampling procedure uh, is it a non-probability sampling or probability sampling so if we are using probability sampling then which probability sampling stratified cluster random sampling simple uh, so we systematic or simple sampling so all of this needs to be mentioned and if we are doing non-probability sampling then the type of it which are you using you're using haphazard convenience sampling or purposive sampling or snowball sampling what are you exactly using or quota sampling so you have to mention your sampling procedure then the control or comparison group so what is the difference between the group being tested and the compar comparison group or the control group so you have to be very clear on that and then what data needs what are the analytic techniques how are you interpreting the results and your ethical issues then we come to the timetable so here we are going to mention the time frame we are using like for example one to four months for data collection so you you have to write the time on the left and then the work that you're going to do on the right so that is how budget you can skip then the analysis how are you going to anal analyze your data if the data is quantitative or qualitative how is it getting analyzed 
and then the bibliography so bibliography in psychology we have like apa that we fo like follow throughout so if you have some uh, uh, some apa or mla that you have to follow so please follow it very like bilkul ekdam attentive okay then the annexure so it is basically a proof giving where you are actually giving all your consent form your original questionnaires your offer official letter your original scales your cover letters and your informed consent so that is how you wrap up your whole research proposal certain things that before ending i want to mention that nowadays people are actually using ai to make a research proposal and the supervisors and the professors are very well aware of it so you will find multiple universities actually taking into that into account they ask you to leave your paper outside now the real question comes they ask you the variables the uh, design the way you are assessing the participant how what is the inclusion or the exclusion criteria so you should be very thorough with your idea and one more suggestion i want to give that uh, basically you think that you uh, need a uh, tuition or something or somebody you pay and make your research proposal so basically i don't know how much ethical it is but i clearly know that if you do not have your own idea in your research proposal you won't be able to sit in the interview like with all your confidence because how are you going to answer if you're not writing it so please try to write it follow these guidelines and put your any doubt uh, like regarding this in the comment section below if you like the video then please like share and subscribe do the needful whatever we do so psychology with vishali is there on instagram as well as youtube and on linkedin my name vishali sharma i am on linkedin as well so with that thank you very much for the staying with me on this video i hope you have a very nice day